my way every day with love as I walk with the heavenly dove. Oh, let me go all the while with a song and a smile. Feel my way every day with love. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thankful to the Lord to be back in the house of the Lord. It's always a blessing. And as Terrence said, the doctor told me I don't need blood pressure medicine anymore. And I thought that was great that God did it. He did the healing. So I always thank him for all things that happen. Amen. We're going to read this morning from Psalm 46. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful. Lord, for your blessings, for you ever being mindful of us. Lord, your tender mercies, love and care is always with us. Father, you're even there when we not know not that we need you. Lord, you steal that blessing. We ask you this morning for everyone that is present. Father, touch their hearts, Lord, and grant unto them that which they have need of, have to have need in their bodies or whatever it is. Lord, spiritual, Lord, just let it be as they request. Oh, God, we ask you to bless those in the Sunday school classes, Lord, especially touch those young hearts, Father, that they may start to grow and understand your holy word. Lord, for it has been that we know one generation pass, another one comes forth. So we ask you, God, just to prepare them if we be here that much longer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Though the waters there are roar, be trouble, and though the mountains shake with the swelling there of Selah. There is a river, and the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raised. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. God bless you. You may be seated. Shake hands with one another because the one you're shaking hands with can be the Lord Himself dwelling in flesh. And we can see Him. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. You'd like to turn in your scriptures. We uh, have a couple of questions that we want to cover this morning. And uh, so we'll try to get that part. And, uh, you know, so we'll go to Colossians where we've been reading and 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> Now, remember the Bible study this coming Saturday. Remember that. Bring the spring festival will be the 13th. 
So remember these in all and keep everything in mind. Uh, the Lord willing, Wade will be, we're going to put him back in his rotation and get him back in. We, uh, we like for him to go other places and preach, but we like him to preach here. So he's going to minister this evening and try to give us a report from all of the things. And then if he don't finish, he's just going over to Wednesday night and finish up then and take care of it, okay? All right, so remember these announcements. Any other announcements? Remember all of the sick ones among us. There's many, many sicknesses, many things. You know, uh, we don't have to accept the fact that we're getting older, but that is a fact, and it's happening. But uh, all we got to do is just keep saying, by his stripes, I'm healed, and uh, saying, thank you, Lord, for it. And I believe it'll just be made manifest, don't you? All right, Colossians 3 and 1 Corinthians. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for your love, your grace, your kindness. Thank you for you. We just ask you now that you'd come among us, Lord, and that you would first cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness to make us all worthy for you to come into our presence and to dwell with each one of us. And we ask you to help us, remember the sick ones among us, and just touch each one of these, Lord, that are having to view in, and all we thank you for that opportunity that things can be done like that, but we don't glory in the fact that we can use it. We just use it for your glory. So we ask you to guide each one of us and just have your way. Forgive our sins most of all, because that's what we want to be covered and be complete in you. Keep us now as we try to speak your word and try to answer questions and things, Lord, and you just have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll just read the scriptures we don't because it was on the part, but we'll go to Colossians 3 and we'll just pick up verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. See, that's Genesis uh, 1, right? Okay. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen. So let's go over now to Corinthians where we've been reading from. We'll go to verse 15, chapter 15, verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which is which did put all things under him. In other words, it's manifest. He is complete. He's done. He's doing it. It's what he's doing, not what we're doing. Okay. And while all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. You may be seated. The Lord had his blessing to the reading of the word. Now we, covered this past Wednesday and uh, bringing forth, you know, what we've been trying. I thought we would try to get it to an end on that, but really what it's done is just unfolded to more of the same thing, but it won't be the same point. So we'll be picking up and moving on, you know, into that uh, as we go along. And you'll see how I believe the Lord willing that it ties together. You that have the notes for this morning, uh, put them up and keep them for next week because that way we won't have to make no new ones. And that way it'll give you a whole week that you can read. You can figure out what I'm going to try to say uh, and all of that. So just do it that way. All right. So let's just get into thought. We have some questions to do on another part that I'll wait till later to try to cover that. But uh, this is just specifically to the time right where we were Wednesday and trying to uh, minister, you know, and all. And I, I wish you would listen to that message again. Not that I'm that good of a minister, but if you can retain all the things I said in that message Wednesday night by listening one time, I'll tell you in a hurry I can't, even though I said it. You know, and that's, a, that's a good way of saying it. <laughs> all right. Well, we got a couple of questions to be related right into the area. And see, they didn't, the person passing the notes question didn't know that I had this 
top part of my notes for this morning to make sure and express something. So it's the very thing that I have written down, you know, to work in. All right, question number one. In the new heaven and new earth, does all three sons' name come to an end? Like you've got son of God, son of man, son of David, so that God will be all and in all. All right, now, uh, I'm, I'm like this. Even though, uh, I'll cover it in a minute, uh, even though we would talk about uh, maybe uh, redemption being over or this being done or that being done, remember, you will never forget. I don't believe in eternity that you'll ever forget of his name here or anything, or redemption. All right, because see, I believe when we get there, it'll just unfold more of the redemption, but it'll still be that we'll know that he was the son of God, son of man, son of David. We'll still know that, but it'll be increased to give us better understanding uh, of, uh, you know, what it is. Because it, it's not to do away. It, it really means where it says there that we read, you know, the son himself shall become subject. It didn't do away. The, if you followed the way I was expressing it and the way the prophet was bringing it, said the kingdom that Jesus would give to the Father. All right. See, there's something that has to transpire, fire, transpire into that doing. But how did he say that it done? He said God the Father would hover over the Son. See, in other words, become one. And to me, it's the same thing as I said. Maybe we need to get an anointed one because, see, I see that's what happened. I believe that's what happened there on uh, the River Jordan that people are so confused about. But to me, it's very simple. He was born Lord to Christ. He was Almighty God. He didn't become God at the River Jordan. He became anointed. All right. He didn't become the Messiah. He became the anointed Messiah. Amen. All right. See, then that makes him to where that it's just unfolding. See, when we get there, we won't forget this. When I try to illustrate it, I don't believe it'll be a, a father over here, a son over here, and the Holy Ghost fluttering here or anything like that. I, I believe we'll see Jesus Amen. and know he is almighty God Amen. because that was what he said. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Well, I, what does the Father look like? The Son. Amen. What does the Son look like? The Father. Amen. That's sensible. That's not, uh, you know, it's not a, a point, to, something hard to understand. It's just sensible. Amen. It's plain language to say the, that what happens, each one of those manifestations, God has many manifestations. Amen. All right. See, he's a road to share in the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. None of that will be forgotten or done away with. It'll never be. It won't be. None of that will be done away with. All of it just keeps, uh, what would you call it? It keeps um, spreading out more, all right, becoming greater in our understanding, many manifestations. But see, you know, I mean, I'm at the house and, and uh, you know, me and Nanny, we're, we're there at the house by ourselves. Well, See, you'd say, well, oh, well, you ain't nothing but a husband. No. As long as I have children there, somewhere else knowing and thinking about me as being a father. Well, soon as she calls me daddy, I call her mama. You know, it's not the point of trying to, to be, it's, it's the point of understanding who we are. Amen. Right. You know, we follow that point, Amen. you know, and all. And see, it'll never be. It, don't ever think about God, anything in God being done away with. Because if you, if you could do away with God, how, you know, it, it, it just don't work, okay? So think of that as it increased. Brother Moat had a way of expressing uh, like God, you know, we think of God as, as being like an apple. You know, you cut it up, Brother Brown talking about you, your, your, the way you try to express it and and Brother Mo had it like this. He said, you take an apple, you cut it up, and you give it out. Well, you just run out of pieces. Well, you've run out of God. Yeah, right. But that's incorrect. Amen. 
See, if you're going to take the apple, you cut the pieces, hand it out, and more grows back. That apple keeps getting bigger and bigger instead of running out. See, that's, that's the way God does things because his is entirely different from, from the way we do things. Because, see, he, 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 he can uh, do it. He's increasing instead of decreasing. And let's see, what was that word that brother, I'm thinking, what are you? Oh, expanding himself. Yeah, and that's been about 50-something years ago. <laughs> yeah, he preached on expanding himself. All right? See, it just keeps unfolding, unfolding, unfolding. So it's not doing away. In other words, we'll be sitting there in the future home with him, but we'll know him as this or that or the other. But that was the point that I wrote down. Do you realize in the future home, that's why, it mean, that's why the scripture said that God may be all and in all. Or all in all. all right, now, we, we covered it to where you wouldn't un- misunderstand. It doesn't mean everybody in the world's got the Holy Ghost. Now, we know better than that. It don't mean all in all like that. Well, everybody's going to be saved because the Bible said God is all in all. No, not that way. But remember, and uh, Brother Donnie had asked me a little bit yesterday on something. Just remember this point. This is the best way I can comprehend what will take place when we leave this world and going on into the millennium and the future home and think is to think about there is a bride. All right. And that's what it's talking about. That God may be all and in all. He's going to be in the bride because he's going to give her eternal life in her soul right here Right? Amen. All right. But now what about those that are given eternal life? What about the Jews? What about the, the foolish virgins? What about those? Amen. There'll be people be given eternal life. But now the eternal life that's given to them is an impartation. Adam, it was imparted to Adam eternal life. Adam never had a new birth. Because he wasn't an old, a new birth in the Old Testament, so you didn't have that away. So Adam was imparted, you know, eternal life. Amen. See the foolish virgins and people like that, the Jews, all who ever get eternal life, you know, after this world, I'll put it that way, it will be an impartation. Amen. See, an impartation is not a birth. Right. No. Amen. So do you see the difference in the bride Amen. and who she is? Amen. We are his children. We are his offspring. Amen. Right. We are him made manifest Amen. in another form called a bride. Amen. Right. All right. And see, that's not just an impartation. Amen. That's something that you receive, yes, but in God before the world ever begun, he already knew who was going to receive it. Amen. He already knew what would take place. So then the all in all, see, you say, well, it's just a bride. No, it's not just a bride. Right. No. You know, uh, we'll get to it because I got the notes for the, the next message coming on uh, in the future home. Do you realize in the future home that the bride can live in the city? The other people can't live in the city. But now... If they are, now here's the wording, if they are redeemed, if they get eternal life, that is the eternal life of God. But what's the difference between them? What's the difference between the ones that are the nations and the thing and the bride? It's what it is. It's the way it comes. The bride is part of him. Then remember what we gave from Brother Branham? God is not complete, Brother Branham said, without you. Amen. You realize if the bride is, and the prophet said it, she is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, that's not talking about every person in the world. That's talking about the bride of Christ. All right. See, then when it says the all in all, you've got to put that on to First, the bride. 
and she gets eternal life, making her the offspring of God. But see, the foolish virgins, they only go, it's the furthest they can go is sanctification. They can't go to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right. See, there'll be people given eternal life. Now think about it. People given eternal life, which will be more because there was, you remember, there was uh, Enoch represented the rapture and Noah represented the foolish virgins and the thing. See, that's eight times more of them. So there'll be a whole lot more people given eternal life somewhere else down the road. But we're not concerned with that. We get eternal life here. That's what makes us the bride. The greatest the Jews can be to come back into the way that it's supposed to be, still they will never be the bride. Now, people out of the Jews, people out of the nations, out of, can be part of the bride of Christ, right? All right. But you see what I'm talking about? When you say all in all, Look who it's talking about. In Colossians, it plainly tells you who it's talking about. Did you catch that? All right. And now put on the new man. Who's this? The born again Christian which is, the, is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. goes all the way back to Genesis, Amen. the new creation. Amen. Right. So then you, you understand what I'm saying then. Yeah. See? When you say all in all, look who it's talking about. You remember the story uh, illustrated over and over and why are you out by doing it, but still at least you ought to get the point. Amen. Brother Brown said, you know, we, we're so mixed up in our language do we, we can't understand what's said. Mm-hmm. And see, you say, uh, bored. Well, that can be a lot of different words. Right. But if you explain what you're talking about, right. see, bored can be that, bored can be a different word. But if you say, come on board, stand on this board, I mean, I'm bored with you. Well, see, you're before and the after as explain what you're talking about. Right. So is it with the scriptures? Right. In the scriptures, it will explain what it's talking about if you'll read what it's talking, the, the context right. it's in or who's it talking to. Yeah. So then the all in all... His bride. Amen. All right, you got that? That's a group of people. That's a special designation of himself, it says in the church age book. Amen. All right? They receive eternal life here, the new birth. Amen. But there's others who's going to receive eternal life later. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right, see, then they can be the all in all. That to me is why the Bible says it like that. What's the difference in eternal life in you or the eternal life given to a foolish virgin? The eternal life is the same. Amen. Right? Amen. It's eternal life. But it's the difference in who it is to and the people it's to. All right? So then when you're looking at it, see, all right, in the new heaven and new earth, as all three sons come to an end, son of God, son of man, son of David, so that God will be all in all. Now, they don't come to an end. There's still manifestations. They're still taking things, taking place. When you and I walk off of this earth, right, the 144,000 is going to get eternal life, right? But that don't make them bright. They rejected that. That's where the prophets explained these things, that we in organized religions, we didn't have enough understanding to be able to place it in order. But he explains it. All right? So then that group that gets eternal life in the bride, she'll be inside the city. Keep this for later. 
she can live in the city. But those that are given eternal life, that are not bride, they can't come and live in the city. Yet they'll have eternal life. Because huh? there won't be no death, no sorrows, won't be none of that there. But they'll, they just won't be bride. I mean, to me, that's, that means the, the whole Bible is unfolded Amen. to us that we understand. Amen. All right, now watch. See, then God will be all in all. So by the time the future home comes to pass, all redemptive forms will be completed. All right? All redemptive forms will be completed, but it won't do away with the name. That's where I differ with the people of the message to what they're trying to find. See, they're trying to find some new name. I, I, don't, I don't go that route. Is the name of Jesus going to be done away with? How can it be done away with when you got your kings of the earth that bring their glory and honor into the city? They're still in the point of understanding what takes place. Don't you think me and you will be understanding? His name may change. Right. His name may change. He may get a new name. All right. I have no problems. But it'll never do away with his old name. Amen. Right. Me and Nanny got married. All right. When we got married, she took on a new name. Right. It didn't change mine. It changed hers. Amen. She got a new name. But did her new name make that something unrelated to me? No. Everything she receives is related to me. So well, didn't she ever forget my name? No, you don't do that. So the children come along as an increase of my name. Right? She never goes back to her. It's an increase of my name. All right? More manifestation of my name. Grandkids come along. More manifestation of my name. Great grandkids come along. More manifestation of my name. Well, then she can call me daddy. I'm not her daddy. But in the gospel, I'm her daddy, her father. Right. She can have different meanings to that. Then why are we trying to find some new name? Because we're trying to find a, a rabbit out of a hat trick to get us out of here. Yeah. That's the best way I can say it after 50 years looking at what people are trying to do. Right. Trying to find something that can get them out of here. Amen. Instead of believing the word is here. Right. And receiving that word. All right. But are you following now? Listen. Because they said on here, there's no son's name in the new heaven and earth. Well, it doesn't list it in the Bible now. It doesn't give a name in the Bible that he changes from Jesus or anything. It doesn't do that. We go with the prophet. We believe it. All right. But here's my point about the new name. And I, this is the way I look at it. If you're the bride of Christ, now, uh, every morning, I, I wake my wife up. Well, what would you do? Walk in, wake your wife up. You know, to your husband, what do you do if you go wake her up? She can tell you what I say. I say the same thing every morning, don't I? I don't say Peggy, Nanny. I say Sleeping Beauty, wake up. <laughs> See, that's something between her and me. I don't call you up and say Sleeping Beauty, wake up. Because <laughs> I don't have anything to do 
with anybody else besides me and her. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Lisa, Nene. She's Nene, no, 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 no. And she's got 1,400 ways of saying Nene. But Terrence has got a private name for her that he says. You know? Wade's got a private name for June. You've got a private <laughs> name for your wife. Right? It's something in relationship to you. Go, right? Whether it's you say sweetheart, honey, whatever, you know, it's just. See, that's what I see about a new name. When we get there, the bride in that city. Oh, man, it's, it's next week. Right? When we get there in that city, it'll be an ever-ending unfolding of the name of Almighty Amen. God, Amen. and you will never lose Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't believe that. Amen. Yeah, but if he gets a new name, he don't need that. Hey, let's reason a little. If he gets a new name, it only has to do with a pet name for the bride. Right. Right. Who's them other people going to call him? Right. Who's them people outside the city that's coming in now? Who that, what are they going to call him? That's right. mm -hmm. They can't call him the new name because there's no way to pronounce it. Right. Hey, come on. They're having trouble with JVHU, JVHV. You, you, you can't pronounce it, let alone getting there. Yeah, but, you said, but one of these days we'll get a new name, then we'll be changed. Huh? All right. Will it do away with the name of Jesus? No. no. We'll always know that he was son of God, son of man, son of David, son of Abraham, all your... You'll never do away with Alpha and Omega, beginning and ending. You'll never do away. It just keeps enhancing. It keeps unveiling what he really is to each one of us. Come on in. I'm glad to see your company coming. All right. Now, let's go to part two. In the millennium, does Jesus Christ continue to sit on his father's throne as son of David and then takes his own throne in the new heaven and new earth? Okay. Now, the Father's throne is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Spirit. To the company we're trying to, we always say to you, when you come one time, you're a visitor, two times you're part of it, so welcome. But uh, yeah, we're trying to answer some questions. Yeah. That's why I love, Brother Branham, the message like it is. Right, I gave it to you in the message that I was preaching on. Brother Branham covers in the millennium what will take place. God will come down in the millennium, hover over that human flesh that we call Jesus and like the anointing that I was talking a minute ago at the River Jordan. The anointing didn't make him a different God. It just made that manifest. God will be all in all in the millennium. You know why? Because he's already all in all now to you, you and me. To the bride before the millennium ever comes, he's all in all. She understands. She knows who he is. Uh -huh. See, then the, the only difference between the future home and the, the millennium is because of the things that we're going through. In the millennium, he will hover over and show as himself as being one sitting on the throne because he is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost made manifest as one. There's not three gods. All right. So when, it, when the prophet would cover the hovering over, the, that's in the millennium, right? Son of God, Son of Man, Son of David. Son of David is the rightful throne of the Lord Jesus Christ through the promise of the Son of David which was the son of David and the natural was Solomon. The spiritual son of David is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So he'll sit on the throne in the millennium 
but God will come down and so engulf in all ways because remember, God is a spirit. You can't see him. He's got to have a form to reveal himself. So he comes down in the millennium, but then as something happens, we go into a future home. And when you do, then God becomes all in all. Amen. He's all in all in the millennium. Now listen, you'll get the point. He's all in all to you and I. He's all in all when the Jews receive him. He's all in all in the millennium. But remember, there'll be people after the millennium at the white throne that will receive eternal life. You agree? So then this thing is not finished. See, there'll be something about him that he can't fully make manifest in the millennium even though God can become so one until we won't look at him and see two or three people running around. We will see Jesus and know who he is. We'll come riding back into the millennium, according to Revelation 19, to live a thousand years here with Jesus Christ. Amen. And he'll be on the throne of David. Amen. But he won't be just a son of, son of David to you and I. He'll be the all in all. But there's still some redemption left. Amen. And that's what I've always said. Everybody wants to do away with this. Do away with it. If you're going to do it, preach it correctly. If you're going to give a new name, tell me who it's to and how it, how it comes to pass. Because at the white throne, he'll be there, but we'll be sitting around him Amen. on many thrones right. at the white throne Amen. and judging. Amen. And people will be given eternal life. Amen. As long as you're dealing with eternal life being given, don't try to do away with the name Jesus because Jesus means redeemer. Amen. Right. Anybody that ever gets eternal life gets us on the fact of redeemer. Amen. Did you catch that? Yes. See, then in the millennium, we'll see him as all in all. Amen. We'll know who he is and what's taking place because he'll be our husband. Amen. And God can give us a private name. That's fine. But it won't never be made known to the world. The world will always know him. The foolish virgins of Jews always will understand him as Jesus. If you're trying to get him a new name, just remember, it'll only be a pet name. That's the best way for me to say it. It'll be a pet name given between him and her that nobody else. You say, well, where's the Bible? It says we'll get a name that only we will know. I can't tell you, people's done that, you know, in the message. I remember one brother, you know, he, he had a lot of problems and a couple of wives. But anyhow, he wound up, one of his wives told him what his new name was. Well, that'd be pretty good for Peggy to tell you my new name. Hateful, arrogant, <laughs> stubborn, stupid. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Sarah. What do you call Aaron? Dummy. Don't answer. Don't answer. Don't answer. <laughs> Keep that quiet. Okay. Are you following me? See, there's a lot to the all in all. I didn't have time to explain. I was just putting it out in point. But I got a question that will help us now to understand that part. See? He's all in all to many groups of people. But it takes in the finality in the future home. In the finality of the future home, dwelling on earth, the new city. All right? See, by that time, everybody that's ever going to get eternal life will have it. Okay? And by that, the all in all will be there. Because he'll be all in all. All. But that ought to be his understanding to you right now. 
that, hey, he's my Savior. He's my God. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my Father. He's my all in all. And he's in all. Did you catch it? See, at the white throne, there'll be people given eternal life. Well, the millennium, he can't be fully all in all because there's something left. But by the time the future home come into being, the white throne, everything's going to happen. He'll be all and in all. Do you, do you understand that? Amen. He'll be all and in all. Amen. Why? Because everybody's going to have his life. Right. Are you following me? Amen. By the time you get to the future home, those who have eternal life will be the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. No matter what parts you put it in, foolish virgins, Jews, bride. And the way I love it, Because you get eternal life here, you ain't going to look down on people there. You're going to realize what God done for you. Okay. All right. Now let's get the rest of this part because it, it was saying from, from the prophet said it in the, this day, the scriptures fulfilled it says the father's throne is still in the millennium. That's right. Now watch my point. As written, I told you there's two things to remember. Christ the mystery of God revealed, Brother Branham, is not explaining the future home, the city. He's explaining Jesus Christ coming into the millennial reign. And he can be all in all in the millennial reign to you and I. But there's still parts just to be revealed later. By the time he comes to the future home, then at that time, he's all and in all. Amen. Right. Everybody that has eternal life Amen. will be part of his own life. Amen. That's right. He said, well, well what's, what? that's right. We get it here. Amen. What's the difference between the bride and the 144,000? They get eternal life after we leave out of here, right? But that don't make them bride. Right. Yeah. Right. Foolish virgin gets eternal life. That don't make them bride. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you just keep on going to one day all is in right. all. Amen. All right. Here's the quotation. Jesus came in three names. He came as son of man, which was prophet. And that's what he did. He proved his ministry by being a prophet. We all know that. Every one of us knows it. He never said he was the son of God. See, Jesus never declared himself to be son of God. He declared himself to be the son of man. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right. He said he was the son of man. Now, today he's the son of God, which he, he returned back, and now he is in the form of the Holy Ghost, the unseen person the new birth, the Father's strong spirit within us, right? Amen. But yet God, the Son of God, in the millennium, he sits upon his Father's throne, which he'll be son of David. Mm -hmm. huh? God sits on the throne. What will you see there? It won't be three thrones. Mm -hmm. right. That's what I've tried to get you to see. That's what I kept asking the question. When you get to the future home, what do you expect to see? I, I see by revelation that Jesus is almighty God. Is that the way you see it? That he's all of God. That in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. See, that's what I see Jesus as being. Almighty God. Amen. That's the only name God ever had. Right. See, JVHV or JVHU is not a name. Jehovah's not a name. No. That's right. Jesus is his name. Amen. Right? You take Jesus and run it all the way back. You can't take Jehovah and run it all the way back because you're going to run out. 
Because you're going to come up to somebody like me who's going to throw a scripture out that Jesus, that Jehovah said back there, as you call him, you know, oh, he was Jehovah. He said, by my name, Jehovah, was I never known. Throw that to a Jehovah witness sometime when you're talking to him. When they're talking about the name of God is Jehovah. Give them the scripture. They said, my name, by my name, Jehovah, I was never known. There was no way to pronounce it as J-V-H-V, J-V-H-U. Now, that's the two putting them together, and I'm saying it the way Brother Branham says it. So you can say, well, it's J-V-H-V, it's J-V-H-U. You won't find J-V-H-V separated from J-V-H-U. He's expressing it. And see, there's no vowels. Now, you got an A-I-O-U, you got a U in there but there's not enough vowels to pronounce the name in the Old Testament. Even your scholars will tell you that, that there's not an, there was no vowels to pronounce. It was J-V-H-V or J-V-H-U. Really, Brother Branham puts them both together to, at the same point. He doesn't define it. He puts them together, J-V-H-V, J-V-H-U, in the same message. All right. See, because you can't pronounce it. Then they have that G to a certain way, O D, that the Jews draw it out and write it out as, as saying that that is God, but they have no way of pronouncing it. And they say before they'll ever write that, it's so holy and reverence to them because it represents Almighty God, they'll stop, lay the pen down, and go take a bath, come back, and then they'll write that name. They so reverence that much. All right? But you see, then what is it? See, without Brother Branham explaining, now listen, he, he's explaining Christ the mystery of God revealed that in the millennium, God will be sitting on his throne. Jesus, the human flesh, will what, be what you see. But God will be in that flesh Amen. because that's who he is. Amen. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. Right. All right. That's Christ the mystery. Then he receives the revelation and he goes into the future home at a later date and he brings the same scripture that God may be all in all for the future home. See, then he knows and sees Christ the mystery. He sees the millennium. Who do you think you're going to see in the millennium sitting on the throne? Are you going to see three thrones, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the... No, we don't believe in the Trinity. Amen. There'll be one throne, but who will be on the throne? Jesus. Amen. But you'll realize who he is by then. See, we're getting who he is here now. We're supposed to be realizing who he is here. That's what's going to get us there, is realizing who he is. All right. That he is the all and in all. He's an ever born again believer today that has eternal life. Amen. All right. But that ain't all of his redemptive plan. No. He had the other places, the Jews, the, the, the foolish virgins, the different ones, it has to be added. There'll be things in the millennium then that are not in the future home. It won't fully bring forth the complete revelation in the millennium, but it's a revelation enough to know who that. The Jews will see him sitting on that throne. Hey, listen, we're supposed to be seeing him now. Amen. We ain't got to wait till the millennium to see Jesus sitting on the on David's throne and realize what's taking place. That's to the Jews. Amen. That's their time. The millennium is to the Jews. We're there on a honeymoon. Amen. Right. Those Jews will see him as all in all, but they'll see that he's already in this group. They'll see that he's all in all in, a, in his wife. Then they'll see what happens to them. Because you're 144,000, when we leave out of here, they get eternal life. They're going to realize right there who they are. Right here, they're going to realize who they are and they'll have to give their life. The 144,000 will give their life for the gospel. All right, they're all killed. Two witnesses are killed. All right, 
See, in the millennium, it would be to the Jews. They will be the one that will be trying to understand who he is. It ain't going to be me and you. You and me is going to be able to explain who he is. That's what I told you about it. That's why the Bible covers it. What is it? Uh, is it no, it's not Ezekiel. What is it? Uh, where there'll be a millennium temple. Ezekiel 40, Ezekiel 40 244. to 44 will be the millennium temple built. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. There'll be a millennium temple. Yes, sir. There won't be no sacrifices. Mm -hmm. There won't be no doing like that. No, no. it's there for an explanation. Right. All right. But in the future home, There won't be no temple because the lamb is the temple. I'm quoting these scriptures. I'm laying here in front of me. Revelation, read it, 21, 22. In there. There'll be no temple. There'll be no light because the lamb and God is the light. Now, is that two people? Remember, God can't be seen. So in the future home, you ain't going to be saved. Well, I'll see God in the future home. No, you'll see the body of Jesus and know who that is. You'll really see who he is. But he said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, we can't understand that now. But remember, the Father was in that flesh walking upon the earth. All right. So in the millennium, he will sit on the throne of David. Who? Jesus, the human element, flesh, man, Jesus, the body which is made eternal. And who will be living in that? The Father. He said, he that overcome will sit with me in my throne as I've overcome and sit with my Father in his throne. He overcame on the death, on the crucifixion and come to the Father's throne, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now in the millennium, the Father comes to the throne of David through the Son of Man, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all a correct story or the acts of a play that is unfolding down through there that God may be all in all. See, then it's not looking like in the millennium, well, there's only two of them here, but in the future home, all three of them gets together. Mm -mm. He is that now. Amen. Who is your God? What are you expecting to see in the millennium? The same one that'll be in the future home. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, Philip, have I been so long with you? Yep. Philip said, sure, it's the Father. He said, have I been so long with you? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There he stood. See, we want to make Jesus, that's the problem with the people of the next, they want to make Jesus a body, spirit, and soul man. And then try to some way on the River Jordan bring this in and bring this in and let him become God. And the more it keeps coming in till finally all three of them winds up back together. Well, I don't believe that. Amen. Amen. Whatever you believe, you do what you want to, but I don't teach nothing like that. Amen. I believe when that baby was born, the Bible's right. Amen. A body thou hast prepared me. Right? But Brother said it was the Father that provided the body. Then he turns around and said it was those Old Testament prophets that built the body. That was what God was doing to provide. But when that spirit and that soul stepped into that body, it wasn't the spirit and the soul just of a man. It was the very soul of Almighty God. It was the very spirit of Almighty God. His spirit and his soul was eternal. Amen. You say, yeah, but wait a minute. He is tempted. You got eternal life? Mm -hmm. right. You ever have any problems? 
Are you ever tempted? I ain't going to ask how many times we yield. I'll ask how many times we're tempted. But are you following me? See that God may be all in all. That comes in stages, see. He's an ever born again believer right here today around the world. He's all in all. He's an all born again believer. But there's more about him to be made manifest. So when we get out of here, you get 144,000 Jews that will get eternal life to them. He'll be all in all. And they'll look and see that that bride was the very all in all that he cherished. He didn't come back to get them. Now, come on. He come back to get his bride. The Jews wound up as part of it because they were part in the beginning. All right. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? It's unfolding. The all in all is the bride. Then when he steps into another manifestation with the Jews, there they are, the all in all. When he comes to the white throne, he will give eternal life to the foolish virgins in different groups. Then he's all in all. All in all just keeps getting greater and greater and greater. When it comes to the white throne, he's given to the foolish virgin all in all. And then everybody that has eternal life will be the all and in all. When are we going to get down to believing the prophet? How many times have you ever heard him say, all that God was, he poured into Christ. All that Christ, he pours into the church. Take her back to the Garden of Eden. How many times have you heard him say that? Now what do you think he's talking about? When he says God is not complete without us, do you, how many quotes do you want? That we are a part of God. Right? Amen. Now, how many quotes do you want of the prophet where he said we're a part of God? Amen. Well, you know, that many simple language then. There's the whole fullness. If you take out one little piece, he's not complete. If there's anybody in the world today that hasn't received eternal life but does receive eternal life, you realize he ain't complete until that eternal life comes into that person. Right? right. Is that sensible? And see, it's the expanding of God. Revealing himself in a greater way. And you realize, and I'll make this statement and quit on it and see if anybody else got any questions. So if you've got anything, raise your hand. We're gonna... You realize that you and I have the greatest opportunity that has ever existed in this world for us to have the very uh, interpreter in our soul to interpret God's word. All of the compound names of Jehovah applying to Jesus Christ. And we're his wife. We're his wife. We're his children. How can you explain that? You realize the Bible says he's my brother. He's my savior. He's my redeemer. He's my healer. He's my father. He's my son. He's my Holy Ghost. He's all of those titles. Amen. Right. And how can you explain it? In one thing, if you're a born again Christian today, you have part of God's life in you. Amen. That's right. 
And until that happened to you, God is not complete. Because we're apart. You get all the parts together. No, come on, are you listening? And just because every born again believer, the bride of Christ, even though she receives eternal life, there are some parts of God that are not made manifest. He's got to go to the Jews and get them. He's got to go to the white throne and get them. There's some parts. I can't say it no other way. That's not been made manifest. See, we're talking about, oh, the plan of redemption is over. That was one of the first doctrines that hit me in the message. They told me I couldn't be saved after 63 because redemption was over. Well, I'm sorry that I'm hard-headed and everything else and just kind of like to read a little. But I told them, I said, well, according to my Bible, redemption was over before the world ever begun. So then ain't none of y'all saved. Because you're saying it was after 63, you know, you couldn't get saved. It was before the world. He died as a lamb before the world. You see, for sure of one thing, you know, for sure of one thing, the person that tell you you couldn't be saved until after 63. They made sure they got saved before 63. Yeah. Right? Because right. they weren't going to get up there and say you couldn't be saved after 63. And, and I'm in the same shape because I can't be saved either because I ain't saved yet. No. You see how silly we are? When we've got the greatest opportunity of comprehending God's Word, to be able to go all the way back to Genesis and come straight down through the Bible and come out to the end of the full plan of redemption to be delivered to us to take us straight to the future home. Amen. You remember what I told that man at my home that day when he was telling, you know, and I said, I know what you're doing. And you're thinking you're going to go beyond Brother Branham. You're going to tell us something Brother Branham didn't tell us. I said, go ahead and tell me. But I said, start after the future home because he got me that far. Well, he just shut up. Because where are you going? I said, tell me something after the future home. I said, prophet, preach us to the future home. Well, he didn't like that. I was a smart aleck. It's all right. I agree to be an aleck. I ain't too smart. But do you understand what it's simply? Anybody got a question out of relation to any of the other? Brother Ryan, uh, somebody better get the microphone. Wait, let him get a microphone for us. Okay, go ahead, Brother Ryan. You probably already answered this, and maybe I missed it, but in the millennium, will Jesus be sitting on the throne in a corporal body? And that'll be in the temple, or mm -hmm. where would that be? Yeah, it could be in the temple because the temple will be there. Right. It's just not a temple made for sacrifice or anything else. Okay. It's a temple. That was all. Thank you. But he'll be there in a physical body. You know what? If it, let's go, how are you going to say physical? That's an eternal body. But he'll be an eternal body that's physical. All right? Because we're going to be there in eternal bodies that's physical. Because mm -hmm. we're going to have a body like he is. Right? right? And we're going to be there with him in physical bodies, but bodies that are made eternal. Right. Now, to the rest of this, are, they're not going to be eternal. Because huh? he'll be sitting on the throne, and he'll be designated son of David, if you want to put it that way. But just remember, my point was all the way through, if he's sitting on that throne, there is Almighty God. There's Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the, all of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, all of it's sitting right there. Amen. In that body. And we'll be around him, and he'll be all in all. Anybody else? 
Sister Trudy. The bride is the only one that has a new birth, right? Of all the people that have eternal life, right. the bride is the only one. Because when you said an impartation is not a birth, right? so everybody else is given an impartation right. of eternal life. Right. Okay. That was my, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to know that. Only the bride has the new birth. Because okay. see, she's got to be part of him. Right. That's why the new birth is why I believe it like I do. What is the new birth, Brother Dale? Brother Branham, what is the new birth? It's a revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. The Word, in other words, revealed to you is that new birth. Well, what could be revealed to a foolish virgin? That he's a foolish virgin. But he could be given eternal life because of his, the things that he done. Anybody else? Somebody else? Brother, Brother John first, and then Brother Boyd, or one of the two. Cody. So, uh, yes, Brother, I know in the, uh, I think it's the, the breach, uh, Brother Burnham is saying that Jesus Christ is leaving the Father's throne to take his own throne. Right. So just wonder if you can explain that a little bit. Okay. And getting into, you're in Revelations 4 and 5, okay? That's where Wade's in that part. I'll just make an emphasis of it a little in Revelation chapter 4, you go to heaven. You see the throne. There's nobody on it. It doesn't list somebody on it. It sees the throne first. And then you see somebody on it. See, it's separating it. The throne is there. All right? That throne is the baptism of the Holy Ghost down through the seven church ages. That's the throne of God. All right? Now, here, there's something close to that in that. Now, I'll just paraphrase it. But Brother Brown said, see the lamb? He said he comes forth. And he said he comes around from behind. He said he's been back here making redemption through the church ages. He said he comes forth. Now, may, now I may have this backwards, but he comes forth, takes the book out of the one sitting up on the throne, climbs up on the throne and sits down and says, I'm the one that did it. What does that mean? That means God is immorphing. And you're seeing him. The, the, you could spend hours, okay. Because where does the lamb come from? The lamb comes from the church ages. Right. Right. See, you climb up on the throne, he does, and sits down. And then see, he can open the book. Because he becomes one with the one sitting on the throne. Not if there's two different people. He just keeps evolving or in morphing changing his form until here comes all of God finally into view and he sits down on the throne. That's in chapter 5. He gets up on the throne, sits down, and says, I'm the one that done it. All right. Now, Brother Branham said it this way, and I'm going to make the statement because Wade's coming back to it one of these days. The chapter 5 is the opening of the seals. We go to 6 and try to read this and read that and read Brother Branham said chapter 5 is the opening of the seals. Hmm? That don't even sound sensible to our human minds because it's for fifth, sixth chapter he started in the seals. The opening of the seals is not to the bride, it's to Jews. Okay. All right, that enough, brother? Okay. Brother Boyd? Okay. So we got to, anybody else? You see, to me, the more you see the Word, the more of God you're seeing. Amen. Huh? Is there anybody? Okay, Sister Anna, excuse it's me. It's just a quick question. Um, now, the sequence will be the, the, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we'll be here for a few days, like 30 days, then we take the rapture. Okay, my mind went to, I know some believers will be left behind, mm -hmm. those who don't have the Holy Ghost. And they know the word, and they'll know that maybe the bride's gone up. Somehow, probably they'll know. 
Now, the foolish virgins are the ones who will die when they give their life for the gospel. Right. I was just my mind just went wondering, wonder, um, and I kept wondering, okay, if some believers will know that something has happened, yeah. okay, and they know probably Armageddon is about to come on, mm -hmm. the nuclear war. Well, if somebody decides to take a gun and shoot themselves, and they'll believe, okay, they, they know the word, is that, will they be foolish virgin or will they be lost? Just wondered about that. That will be totally left up to to God himself as to what those people would be. Because I can say it this way. That's where we were always taught if you killed yourself, you were going to die and go to hell. Well, see, the prophet straightened that out. That's not it. He said it doesn't matter. He said you can take a gun and blow your head off. He said that has nothing to do with your salvation. See, we was taught it did. We was taught that we was lost. See, because of that. Because that was the Catholic trying to scare you. But see, uh, the foolish virgins. In other words, we go out of here are the resurrection comes. Now, I'm quoting Brother Brown, and we'll get to quote. Some of the people, as you said, see, are not into bride, so they don't get it. They don't see what's taking place. But now, here's the one statement. Let's see. Brother Brown said, a little voice will say, you missed it. Well, see, everybody said, well, look at our. I've heard people say, said, look at our. They had the Holy Ghost because who's the little voice telling them? The little voice telling them is a soul that's with a man that sees that he's done lost it and he don't have no hopes to go into bride. So then he'll have to give his life for the gospel. And he can be given eternal life, but remember, if you turn this message down, there is no hopes at the white throne. Now, if you turn it down, you're going to face him as an unbeliever. So don't put the foolish virgin just in a lump, you know, something. Remember, he said there'll be a little voice say, you missed it. That's not the Holy Ghost telling you you missed it. Because the Holy Ghost has gone in rapture. It's just a voice in your inner being, which is your soul, will let you realize, hey, I've missed this. And what can I do? What can you do but give your life for the gospel? But I sure don't want to stand in that place. And I'm going to say this plain and blunt to you. You here in Lula, you can think what you want to, what I've taught, what I've been all the years, and what's been taught to you all these years. Don't you ever think you can qualify for a foolish virgin? Don't get that in your mind. If I don't make it in the rapture, I'll just go as a foolish virgin. You better be careful. Now, some of the churches across the country, I'm just plain for what they've taught and everything that people might be foolish virgins sitting there and get eternal life when the pastor will even lose and not even get it himself. But you have no excuse. You take that as being an exalted statement. Do what you want to because for 40-something years, I've been teaching these things and you come show me where I changed. Come show me where I changed my doctrine. If I see I'm wrong, I'll be glad to tell you I'm wrong. I don't have to worry about it. I preached for years that beyond the curtain of time, they didn't have the senses. But one day I found a prophet said they did. I came right here and told you I was wrong. The prophet said, them beyond the curtain of time had cetase fields, I mean, had memory reason because they were remembering what took place. I don't mind telling you I'm wrong. So if you think I'm wrong, come tell me. Anybody else? Who's... Okay, Sister Barbara. I was just curious. Now, the 144,000 are going to become servants to the bride. Yeah. The five or six million Jews that died in the Holocaust, will they also be servants to the bride? Well, see, you're, uh, you're talking about a fifth seal Jew, and yeah. that's not servants to the bride. You've got to des designate there can only be 144,000 servants to the bride. 
Uh, you know, because they get now. That's the, the here's the catch. Here's that one, two, three step. The, we get eternal life here, and we leave out the foolish. Uh, the uh, 144,000 get eternal life. Then they give their life. The foolish virgins and the other Jews and the thing get eternal life at the white throne and thing. So then you've got different stages. See, they won't be full servants to the bride. They'll just be there because it's a promise. Oh, okay, because they get robes of righteousness. That's what I was wondering. And what now? They get the white robes of yeah. righteousness. They're given white robes. Yeah. So that's at the white throne that that happens? Well, that would be at the white throne, but uh, I, I'm technical, all right? Okay, I'm uh, just curious. <laughs> I, I've taught it and I believe it. The fifth seal Jew don't go to the white throne. Now, if you can find where Brother Run said he did, all right, let's let's hear it. But I, I want to hear it from him because that fifth seal Jew, according to the Bible, is given white robes and told to wait. Now, listen, that's white, not white throne. They're told to wait until their fellow brethren, which is the 144,000, are killed. So that fifth seal Jew has to be somewhere between us stepping out of here and God going to the Jews for the 144,000. That fifth seal Jew cuts off somewhere right there. There won't be no more of them. They'll be given white robes. Well, if they're given white robes, why are you going to the white throne? You say, well, they're going to the white throne to get robed. No, that, you're way back over here. You're not getting it. You're not listening to the point. The point is we leave out of here there's somewhere right in there there's going to be a cutoff for that Jew of the fifth seal Jews because the next will be the redemption to the 144,000. Now, there will be Jews because they'll be just like foolish virgins. They'll be Jews at the white throne because they can qualify for foolish virgins, right, and be given eternal life at that time. But that's specific. That's why, uh, oh, man, church, you talk about something. When that prophet, when I read that in that fifth seal, oh, that opened up a lot of things to me that I'd always wondered about. It sounded like some group of people were there, but we couldn't understand what to do with it. He realized God blinded their eyes that we might be saved. He blinded them that we might be saved. Amen. Right. Oh, what a wonderful time. Anything else? Anything else? Sid? Yeah. Anybody else before we go? All right, come on. Come on, musicians. Think on these things. Like I said, now, keep these notes that you got because when you look at your, at your notes, you're going to see automatically that we're going to a position because you're going to see. That if God's not complete without of us, you realize in that city, it's going to be a carnal statement, but listen. You realize in that city, now in the city, not in the world or anything, in the city, if you are supposed to be that light and they're not there, there'll be a dark spot. That's plain language. Because see, you're the light of the world. They have no need of the light. If you ain't there, the city won't be lit. Because you're part of God. I wish we'd get that. I wish we could just realize it. I'm talking about me. To realize, hey, we're a part of God. Not this here. That eternal life that dwells within you is a part of God because it's his own life. Go ahead, brother. What we got? Anybody have a need? Let's stand. Jesus, all hell, Emmanuel, you are King of kings. You have a need? Come, let's see. And throughout eternity.
eternity I'm going to pray and Listen to the prophet. Who will populate the earth outside of the city? Now I'm just giving you an illustration how you can read something word for word. If you don't know the before and after, you're going to miss it. But listen to him. It will be, now who will populate the earth outside of the city? It will be the redeemed that will populate the earth outside the city. It'll be the redeemed. It will be the redeemed that will populate the earth outside the city. But they will not be the elected and called bride. Now he just called them redeemed. They will not be the elected or called bride. The bride will be, will live inside the kingdom with the king and on the outside will be the kings of the earth and labor and bring in their clothes. But he calls them redeemed. See? Don't get mixed up with wordings. Well, it's he's the redeemed. I'm the redeemed. There's a lot of redeemed. Foolish virgin gets eternal life. They're redeemed. Jews gets eternal life. They're redeemed. It doesn't mean there was the redeemed. It said they are the redeemed. It's a wonderful thing to know and realize. It would be great to just be a foolish virgin to get eternal life. But I just can't take no change. I got to press on. I got to fight the battle. 79 years old next month. I got to keep fighting. I can't quit till I get there. We got to press home. Father, thank you, Lord, for the day and the message and things. Thank you for the word that we've heard from your prophet of how all these things fits together. We pray that you just bless us. Guide us now as we go eat a natural meal, come back this evening. Bless Wade, Lord, and ministering unto us and showing us the things that have been on a live ministry, went to these places and preached. Not just a dead letter or not even just a book to reread, but a living reality of life. To realize and see Jesus Christ made manifest. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. You're dismissed. Mm-hmm.